Okay, so I wanted to talk to everybody about the magic of music therapy, particularly for seniors living with dementia or Alzheimer's disease. I know we covered this a lot in our classes this semester, but I thought we would start out with looking at dementia and Alzheimer's a little bit closer for a second. So according to the Alzheimer's Society of Canada, nearly 40% of people over the age of 65 will experience some form of memory loss. So when we think about dementia and Alzheimer's disease, they're most commonly associated with memory loss. But the thing is that age-associated memory loss is normal to a certain degree. So what is not normal is when people start losing lots of memories and losing them very quickly. While a large part of living with Alzheimer's and different forms of dementia involves memory loss, patients can display many more symptoms than just that. So these can be things like difficulty thinking and problem solving, difficulties with language and expressing emotions, or changes in mood and behavior. Dementia is also a progressive disease, so what happens is that when more brain cells are damaged, the more they become damaged, eventually they'll die. So therefore, there is no cure for dementia, and it is very important that people living with Alzheimer's and different forms of dementia uh, stimulate their minds so that hopefully the progression of the disease can be slowed. I personally have been working in a long-term care facility for almost eight months now, and one of my very favorite forms of therapy is music therapy. And I like to facilitate a lot of music programs wherever I can for a few reasons. So music therapy typically requires little to no equipment. And you might be thinking, well, how do you run a music program with no instruments? And uh, the kind of music therapy programs that I like to do with, with the seniors don't actually involve us making the music. Uh, that would be really hard for a lot of the seniors. And don't get me wrong, uh, you'd be surprised a lot of them can still play the piano and the guitar and they can read sing song cards and do all that. But the home that I personally work for right now, a lot of them just don't have these abilities anymore. So I'll discuss some of the other music program options for this particular population in a minute. Um, music therapy is generally liked by everybody. Most people enjoy music and I find that music programs are a great way to get everybody together. Uh, it's easy to do individual, small, medium, and large group programming surrounding music, so that's another reason I really enjoy it. The other reason I like music therapy is because I genuinely believe in its therapeutic value. So there's a lot of published literature on the effects of music for people living with dementia. And just with a basic Google search, I was able to pull up some articles discussing how agitation and disruptiveness decrease during music therapy sessions. And there's an increase in patient self-expression following music therapy sessions as well. Okay, so we're going to overview some of the music therapy programs that I enjoy. So similar to in the video, one of the best and most simple ways to engage a resident living with severe forms of dementia is to conduct an assessment to determine who they are. So it can be hard as a recreation therapist to find programs for residents who are very nonverbal and show very little emotions. So if we do not have any information on their background, it can be really hard to find programs that they're interested in. So it's important to know things like what the resident did for a living, where did they live, how many family members did they have, what sorts of family traditions did they practice, what kind of activities did they enjoy, things like this. So we can try and find these things out by talking with the resident's family, if they have any family that they're still involved in their life. We can talk with staff that know the residents very well. We can try and talk to any friends or again any family. and. Uh, look at things that they have in their rooms, look at their photographs, look at look at their little knickknacks and all of their belongings to really try and find out who that person is. And once you have a pretty good understanding of who your client is, then you can decide what kinds of music you think they might enjoy. So similar to in the video, we're looking for music that relates to their life, to their past. And the goal of conducting a program uh, like this is really just to, just to see if your client will focus on the sounds that they hear. Uh, it's really amazing to see a client react the way that the ballerina does in the video, but truthfully, this is not always going to be the case. 
Um, another program that I want to quickly go over is Name That Song. So Name That Song is a medium to large group activity that requires very little equipment. All you need is a speaker that's loud enough so that the group can hear the music and yourself to facilitate the game. So when playing Name That Song, you will gather a group of 5 to 10 residents and seat everyone facing yourself. Uh, the rules of the game are very simple. The facilitator will play a short clip of popular songs from the 1920s to the 1980s. And once that clip has been played, the facilitator will then ask the group if anyone can name that song. Residents will then raise their hands, uh, or if they're unable to raise their hands, they'll notify us in any way that they can that they have the answer, and then they'll say it aloud for the group. If the answer is incorrect, we'll just continue until somebody gets it. And if nobody ends up getting the answer, then the facilitator will simply tell everybody the answer. And the game is great because even residents who don't necessarily want to play the game can still listen to the music and watch everybody else having fun. Uh, there's another variation to the game that I like to play so that the group really benefits from the experience. Uh, but this variation requires an additional staff member to help out. Uh, I find that residents who are more cognitive and have less severe forms of dementia typically still understand the concept of a competitive game. So I will generally group these residents together and we will play the game for prizes instead. In this version, we will give all the participants a sheet of paper with a blank list numbered 1 to 10. So one slot for each song. We'll typically do about 10 songs. Um, and then we will play the game, but rather than asking the group to name that song after each clip, the residents will then write their answers on the sheet of paper. And should they require assistance with writing, they can notify the assistant facilitator. And then at the end of the game, the sheets will be scored and prizes will be given out accordingly. Uh, it's important to note that there's always a prize for everybody, even if they don't necessarily win the game. Sometimes having the prizes is just an incentive for residents who don't typically come out for activities to come and try and, and participate and play the game with everyone. So thank you for watching!